dude. Dude. Get in here. And she's about to come off. Look at that. Welcome to Mikey Balls Fishing. We are in the Bass Cave. This is actually where I do all my editing, all my video stuff, dude. I built this up. When I first started doing this, I had like a $200 computer, dude, and a monitor that was that big. And um, I saved some money and, and built up, but we have some fun editing some stuff here. But enough about that. So I hope it's warm by you. It's starting to get hot down here in Alabama. And um, I know it's hot in Florida, but it, there's been a warming trend throughout everywhere. And we're starting to hit some of those, those summer kind of temps. You know, the water's warming up. The fish are getting done spawning. They're moving out deep. And I have been, you're going to see the videos coming up, on an absolute swim bait kick, along with a few other key baits for offshore fishing. So what we're going to do in this video, actually, Actually, I have one in my hand. Thank you, Ryan, for telling me about this swim bait. The true bass. But we'll get to that. What we're going to do in this video, dude, is I'm going to go through. I, I picked up a bunch of stuff. I'm going on a trip to Lake Pickwick, which is probably one of the most epic offshore lakes on the TVA. And we're going to spend like three or four days there. You'll probably see the video in a, in a few weeks or so. It depends how fast I can edit it. But I literally went crazy at Tackle Warehouse, and I bought a bunch of stuff for fishing a little bit deeper. Pickwick fishes deeper than your classical say 10 to 12 8 to 14 foot ledges there's a lot of super deep stuff out there and there's a lot it gets a lot of pressure so i picked up some stuff that i don't think they've seen a ton of plus it's stuff that i have a bunch of confidence in so we're going to run through these baits and this is literally my little to-go box for lake pickwick and for fishing offshore we're actually going to be heading down to florida in a little bit too i'll be using it offshore there but we're going to go through the baits why i got them and i think you're going to be surprised and like some of the select so stay with us. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Bog, you ready to do this? Bog, can you wag your tail for the camera? Oh, what a good bog because he's going fishing too. Stick with me. You're going to enjoy this. This is all my stuff. There is an absolute ton of it from... Weird crankbaits, I got my new goat jig head because we're gonna be doing some cool stuff with that. But let, let's start picking it apart and have some fun. So I think it's more than clear by now that I am bait, oops, obsessed. Like, I, I do like fishing tackle and I think it's something that we all share. It's kind of like the, I don't know, the model maker of us, dude. We like to kind of get a little DIY. We like to try different things. We like to experiment. Because I think really all of us are searching for that master pattern. It doesn't really exist, but it's kind of like the, uh, what do you call it, the Holy Grail. For, so I'll show how old school I am. You know, Indiana Jones on the Holy Grail. So like everybody's searching, everybody's searching. In Indiana Jones, they actually find it and it exists. It doesn't look exactly like what you think it's going to. But in reality, that Holy Grail doesn't exist. But... There's a bunch of things that you can do to kind of like catch more bass and find kind of cool patterns. And one of the ways to like experiment on that is really baits. You know, you have your, your equipment, you have your rods, you have your reels, you have your, your depth finder, you have all these sort of peripheral tools that you use. But in the end, the first point of contact between you and the bass is these guys. So I like playing with baits and especially I've fished Pickwick a bit, but I've never really been able to go over there and spend like three or four consecutive days. And I think that's one of the most important parts to exploring a fishery because when you get those three or four consecutive days, especially during a time like we're in this summer kind of offshore period, you can see how those fish behave, see how it evolves, and see how it returns to certain little nuances, little patterns, how it changes throughout those days, and you can really get a good picture of what's going on. I'm not saying you're gonna be like top bass master on the lake or nothing like that, but it's a lot better way to understand a lake. Even if a lake sucks, I'll throw you a little bit of advice, dude. If you're fishing your local lake and it sucks, like if it's tough, but you're catching a few here and there, Dude, go at least two days straight. If you can go three days, like every once in a while I get to go three days in a row, this at the time I think I'm gonna fish, well, three and a half days in a row. But like, dude, the more consecutive days you get on a body of water, the better picture of what's going on you get. But let's get to the baits, dude. I'm really excited about this stuff. And um, I spent way too much money at Tackle Warehouse, but that's becoming a continual thing. So the first thing I got, and you guys are gonna see this video coming up, I've been catching some big bass on swim baits. And I gotta throw a shout out to Ryan Salzman and uh, and also my buddy Miles Murray. They're big swim bait fishermen. And you know, I didn't understand, I've heard a lot of the lore about swim bait fishing around here, and I love doing it. There was a year down in Florida, in South Florida, dude, when I was fishing some of that offshore stuff, we we're throwing like seven inch, eight inch bass tricks and killing it. 
it, it was absolutely awesome. So like, I love that, but those lights worked in cycles. Like that turned off and then they get on a spoon. And it seems like one consistent factor up here, or two, I guess, would be a crankbait and a swim bait. So I went a little bit crazy on the swim baits because what's cool about a swim bait, I got these true bass right here. These, some of the ones I got, these are the 5.5. I'm going to get one out for you real quick. What's really cool about a swim bait is I can fish this. I'm planning on fishing some areas down to like say 30 feet of water, 35 feet of water. I'm going to get this thing deep. This is a hollow body. It's the true bass swim bait. It's uh, Salzman's design. But what it does is, I like throwing my big easies on that, but a hollow body has a little different wag to it. And what's cool about it is, I can put this on a three quarter ounce head, or even a one ounce head, and I can fish those depths that are usually only reachable by say like a drag bait, like a, a football jig, a Texas rig worm, a Carolina rig, things along those lines. So a swim bait is one of the few reeling baits or reaction, somewhat reaction style baits that you can fish down to some crazy depths. But what I got right here, this is, I think this is 99 problems. It's kind of got a little bit of purple and a little bit of black in it. Let me show you the one that I'm really like, like kind of focused on and fired up about here. This is Winner Minner. I can tell Ryan like designed the names on these. He, he would say, it's a Winner Minner, that's one but Okay, so it's kind of crazy, but this thing looks a little troutish. It's got a little pink iridescent line right there, but it's, you know, your smoke pattern, little scale on the back. But what I've noticed is some of these shad, especially the big gizzard shad, they have this sort of iridescent finish to them. And I don't know if it matters on the bait that you're throwing, but you know where it does matter in Mikey's head is if my bait looks like what they're eating. And classically, Pickwick's a fairly clear lake, so I don't know what the water's gonna look like. We've had some rain and the main river on, on both um, on Pickwick, Gunnersville, all the TVA lakes have been a bit dirty. I don't know exactly why because it should have cleared out by now. But the one thing I'm hoping is the water's kind of cleared out. What I'm going to be throwing these jokers on, and this is a selfless plug, it's the Gambler Goat. Um, this is the Locked Up Shad Head. I'm going to crack one open. And what's really cool with this, there's a couple of features that I like, but you can use it on a hollow body if you like those true bass. I'm going to show you actually some other swim baits. You can use it on any swim bait you like. It doesn't really matter. But it has, first off, that screw lock keeper. This is the three quarter ounce size. Um, I chose, it comes in a seven aught hook too. I have a few of those, but I like, I think this is the five aught. The five aught covers me unless I'm throwing like a seven inch or an eight inch swim bait, like a gigantic swim bait. So plus a little shorter hook, little side tip, it gives your swim bait better action because part of the deal with the hollow bodies and really any swim bait is what I call wag. It's not so much how the tail like does that, the boot tail, it's how that body, if there's a segment or not, but like that, that lower ladder end of the tail kind of wags back and forth and a shorter hook allows you to get more of that wag. But it's got the screw lock, and what I really like for this, especially if you're fishing places that have hard bottom, such as shell, gravel, even sand, it has this sort of, I don't know, you call it like a flat out belly. Um, it's, it's basically when you stop it, this is what I like, is when you stop it, it's gonna sit like this. It's gonna sit at a 45 on the bottom. And if I super duper creep it, yes, it's gonna kick down because that tail's gonna go down, but I'm gonna be able to kind of roll that thing along the bottom very gently and it's going to bounce off of any cover kind of like a football jig does it's going to bounce off of any cover that i run into so all the swim baits that we're going to talk about in this video including a true bass i'm going to have rigged up on a goat it's either going to be a half ounce or a three quarter ounce i'm not fancy as you guys know if you watch the old videos I used to have a hole in the front deck of my boat i'm not fancy i am running the they're not so they're painted, but they basically, they're natural lead color, but they have a gloss clear coat on them. I like that. They come in like a white ghost pattern. If you like that, it's whatever your confidence is. I like them plain, dude. Plain and simple. That's kind of how I roll. So a lot of you guys have been kind of telling me this for a long time. So touche, you guys win. But I, the other day I was out on Gunnersville. I got into a super pressured school and there was a ton of boat traffic and I caught a bunch of fish, no giants, but literally I could not get them to bite anything else but a 3.3 Kytec on a little finesse ball head. So I'm like, hmm, I'm looking for a little bigger swim bait too to throw down on some of these ledges. So yeah. So I got a Kytec. It's the Fat Swing Impact. These are the 5.8 inches. I got a few different colors. Um, well, actually a few different colors and sizes. So I got the 5.8, that's the bigger one. And then I got a 4.8. This is Pro Blue Red Pearl. This is your classic Tennessee Shad. So 
it's funny. The same reason I hate a Kai Tech is the same reason that you love a Kai Tech. They're super supple baits. The tail will wag and they stink too. But the tails will wag like literally, dude, if you just inch them. If you turn a quarter like real handle, it'll go whoop. And they are also ribbed. You know, I flipped a bunch of mats. We use kind of ribbed pitching and flipping and punching baits. And it definitely makes a difference compared to your streamlined baits. Bass seem to react to it better. But like I said, the, the worst part is they're super supple, which means they tear up very easy. I didn't get a ton, so I'm hoping I use every single one and catch a mega bag. But I got the bigger ones, the 5.8. Um, and I'll, once again, I'll use the goat head. I'm not going to cut anything off this head, I don't think. I'll just put the goat head on there. But those are something I'm gonna use to get down on um, on some of these ledges. It's actually something uh, Jacob Wall recommended I take a look at the bigger ones, and I'm really glad he did, because I wanted something bigger, but not like overly gigantic, and this 5.8 and the 4.8 size are, are perfect remedies for what I was looking for. Something semi, if I gotta go super small, I gotta go super small, but semi, sem, something semi bite size, I can talk, I shoot YouTube videos. Something semi bite size, 4.8, and then something a little more mondo with a little more beef. And as you get wider with these swim baits, they have more wags, so they tend to call in bigger bites, but you don't get as many bites. What else have we got in here? So switching gears a little, I think I'm gonna be long lining a bit. Um, there's definitely some ledges that are deeper that I'm not gonna be able to reach with the traditional casting of a crankbait. I can probably hit them with a 10XD, but as I've told you guys in past videos, the, the boon, every, it's like every lure has a high side and a low side. The boon of the 10XD, it is the school destroyer or the school destroyer. Like literally, and one is like the epic destroyer, like you catch every bass or you catch like three giants, or literally you run it through twice and then you go scan it and all those beautiful little white dots that represent the school on a ledge are gone. Or there's like one left, because they're like, dude, we out. Like they want nothing to do with it. But what I think I'm gonna be doing is a little bit of long line. I will be casting too, but you guys have seen these guys in the vids a little bit. Um, I like different vibrations. So I grabbed some more six cents and you probably saw them in an earlier unboxing video. Well, what I did is I grabbed the C20s. They're a little bit bigger and I'm gonna throw you kind of an interesting bone. So it's almost like the same, if you guys have fished six XDs, eight XDs, 10 XDs. So the weird part about the six XD, eight XD and 10 XD, six XD, brrr, when you're reeling it, super ton of vibration gets off digs, eight XD, it's like the shad wrap of like the XD series, dude. It's like, but it gets deeper. It gets like 22. I can probably hit maybe 23 if I'm really working on it. But it has a much more subtle kind of wobble and vibration. 10 XD, bulldozer. So I kind of found the same thing with the 6X. I have the C15s. So they think they died 15 to 18 or something like that. I can actually hit like 19, 20 with them if, on 10 pound test, but you end up breaking them off a lot. It's, it's kind of a mess, throw it on 12 pound. But basically the, the C20s are a step up from there. So 20 to 23. What I've found is these guys, even though they have what looks like the exact same lip design, same body design, they put out a lot less vibration. That's not a bad thing. They're a lot more subtle to reel down and crank down to that 2023 20, range. And I really think there's been fish out on ledges. You know, they've been battered. There's been a bunch of guys sitting on community holes. There's guys fishing offshore. Everybody's always trying to get ahead of the game. Having something that's a little more subtle and a little different is a big player. Plus I can long line these jokers. They're not as intrusive as I think it's called the C25 or even a 10XD to long line. But I can, I could probably hit 40, 45 feet dude, long line in these jokers. Like they will get down. And like I said, vibration's a little different you'll be surprised how much easier it is to crank even compared to the c15 it's kind of a, a weird little twist so back to some swim bait stuff i am on a kick to catch some fish on a scrounger head if you saw a video a few weeks ago or whatever um i, I bought a bunch of scottsboro scrounger heads let's call them i think they're called the snipers um basically a scrounger head is a jig head with a bill pointed upwards and when you reel it through the water you put a plastic trailer on it when you reel it through the water it like waves at you so it's almost like a like a suspending crankbait in a way instead of it cranking down because of the bill it actually rides up a little bit and it's been a huge key on the tennessee river i've caught a bunch of fish down in florida on it as well it's just a different presentation once again nuanced it's the same kind of style as a crankbait 
but a little different imagination of it. But one of the biggest things I've struggled with is what trailer. I've used the Gambler Eel and I like that. It's a little bit bigger though. So what I wanted is some more compact trailers because you know Pickwick gets beat up. So um, this Jenko company was recommended to me. This is a Jenko Tremor Shad 5.0. Um, these are hand poured. They almost look like the old Optimum swim baits. They're deceptively small though. Even though they look tall in the body, they're actually very thin as you can tell by the package. Let me see if I can crack one out for you real quick. Um, but basically you put that on the, oh no, you put that on the back and it, it did just even like holding it. You see how much it like twitches? So it's like a hand poured plastic. Downside is they're gonna tear up easier, but you get like an action that you can't get any other way. And you put that on the back of that scrounger head and as that scrounger head wobbles, that tail just shakes. You don't need the boot tail because that scrounger head is imparting an action. It's basically like a super high end, high class jerk bait. And these are the Tremor Shad 5.0. Like I said, I wanted something a hair smaller um, because I did want a little more compact presentation. And there actually is a second reason for that. One reason I don't want a giant presentation is, as we talked about, we're gonna try to fish some, some deeper water. The bigger baits you put on there inhibit that jig head from getting down, getting the, the whole bait, the whole presentation down. Um, I have one ounce and three quarter ounce, but if I put something that's thinner, like that, and a little more streamlined, I can keep that bait down lower. And in this game, two to five feet, two to three feet, can be the difference between getting bit and not getting bit. Along that same vein, um, I know a lot of you guys like these. Uh, you can't be, Hog Farmer is the king of, of Lake Chickamauga and big bass, dude. They, like, they put big hooks and stuff. They make some Mondo A-Rig super reinforced. So I got what's called, oh God, can I say this on YouTube? The Spunk Shed. Dun, dun, dun. So once again, it's, it's a scrounger trailer. Kind of a meaty head. These are a little thicker, uh, but it has that super sort of icicle tiny tail on it. It's got balls on its tail. Check that out. Nice job. Nice job, guys. <laughs> but it it has kind of that red form. It's almost like a Kytec for for a scrounger. So Kytecs work, obviously. Um, I got in a simple shad pattern. It looks like an albino shad to me. I'm sure they call it something different. They call it a blue gizzard. So albino, blue gizzard. It's an iridescent white smoke pattern, basically. You know, meant to mimic shad and big gizzard shad. So I'm gonna put that on the back of my scroungers. Once again, you don't need action from the plastic or the trailer, you use the action from the actual jig head. So I'm super stoked about those jokers. They are gonna be fun to fish and I'm gonna do some experiments on some schools with them since I got a bunch of them. So I'm kind of fired up about that. Let's see what else we got in here. Um, so if we're doing lead fishing, I gotta have a drop shot and even a, sort of like a micro Ned rig. And there's two baits that, that I do that with. I wacky drop shot the bait and it's either gonna be a gambler ace or it's gonna be this guy a stinger, this is Domeki stinger. And this has come up so many times in my videos, but I will put this joker onto that little Ned or I will put it on my wacky rig. You can already see it going crazy. The other thing that I do do with this is I do put it on a big football jig as a wacky rig. And you guys have seen my wacky, dude, I did that wacky jig thing. God, that was years ago. But basically it's a wacky jig, dude. And um, I'll do that with either um, this guy or I do it with the O-Beast. If I want some, some bigs, boy, I'll get out that O-Beast. Otherwise, this is sort of my standard presentation, either on a half ounce or a three quarter, and I'll, I'll just wacky rig it right through the middle. I'd recommend colors wise, this is baby bass. If you guys are gonna do anything like this, wacky rigging or anything like that, go with baby bass or watermelon. Um, the consistency of the plastic works better. Um, with some of the Domeki stuff, the consistency of the plastic changes between different colors. Um, this has been one that has been super successful for me and I, I'd highly recommend it. If you're gonna try these out, I guess is what I'm saying, try out the baby bass first, especially if you have semi-clear water, even down to hair stain, but even if you have super clear water, you can't beat this color. Um, along that same note, I don't know if I ever told you guys, but drop shot hook wise, I use the Robo One rebarb hook. So this is gonna be sort of my finesse stuff. You know, when I, when I have a school I can't fire up or if I'm trying to pick some off after I've caught a few. Um, this is the two watt size. I try to stay a little bigger because I use this exact same hook in Florida, which I've caught like an eight pounder, a couple seven pounders. Like I've caught some big fish on it. It holds up and you can also, you can do two things with it. I rig stuff wacky with it 
or I rig stuff weedless because it's basically a straight chain cut. It's perfect on a spinning rod where you run braid as backing and fluorocarbon. If you're looking for a good drop shot hook that, that won't break the bank, this is your boy. All right, the other thing I got is classics. So I got two 8XDs. As we talked about, the 8XD has a little different vibration. What's really cool about these, like everybody knows an 8XD, I got two new colors. And um, so here's the deal too. This is sexy green shad. I was telling my buddy Miles, I want a pair of shorts that look like this. I had one of these and uh, yeah, I broke it off and lost it. So that was awesome. This is Tennessee shad. So here's the deal. On the back of the sticker, can you see that? It says redesigned. So what they did that I've noticed is they put a casting ball in these jokers finally. And I could be wrong. Yeah, that one doesn't have it. But they didn't have that before. So what the casting ball does is it's a weight transfer system. Lucky Craft did it way back in the day. Basically there's a ball in a chamber right there. So when you cast that bait, so you're slinging it, the bait goes out, and you hear it? That ball shifts to the back of the bait, thus giving it more momentum to cast further and more evenly. Because if, if you guys have ever thrown a 6XD, 10XD, the worst thing that can happen is a ca in a cast is what's called a spinner. It's probably the best thing that could have, like, ever happen to you in your life. But like on a cast, not a good thing. Because what happens is the bait spins through the air and like it goes nowhere. It goes like 25 feet when it should go like 40 yards kind of deal. So they finally put that weight transfer system in some of these redesigns. So check your crankbaits when you buy them. If they say redesigned, they have that weight here transfer system, you're going to be able to throw them farther and they're also going to swim better in my opinion. But we got a couple 8XDs because in the end, like things work and they work because they work and why stop throwing them. Last but not least, and this is just a terminal tackle tip because that's about all I got in here. If you guys are looking for budget fluorocarbon, so this time of year, you're gonna be throwing a lot of moving baits. Yeah, we're gonna drag, we're gonna throw a Ned, we're gonna throw a jig, we're gonna throw a worm, even a Carolina. Miles might have me throwing a Carolina rig by the end of the game here, but it's gonna be, dude, like, I'm gonna be have to tape my mouth closed because I'll swear the whole time. But if you're throwing a lot of crank baits, if you're throwing spinner baits deep, if you're throwing chatter baits, anything like that where it's a reaction strike and you're looking to save some money on fluorocarbon, I literally, by bulk spools of this Seaguar Red Label. I know a lot of people don't like it. It's fine by me, dude, more spools for me. This stuff is, it's not cheap, but it is literally the most affordable, budget, decent fluorocarbon you can get. And when you buy it in the bulk schools, it's like super affordable, dude. So I would definitely have, I already, already have a 15 pound spool in the boat of a thousand yards. I got a 12 pound, cause I figure if I'm gonna do some long lining and some cranking, I'm either gonna make a stupid cast and bird's nest, or I'm gonna break a fish off and break off a bunch of line. I wanna have a bunch of line just in case. And that 12 pound is super versatile. I'll throw it on my magnet. I'll sometimes I'll even throw it on a, like on a swim bait or um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, the scrounger head thing, the ch -ch -ch -ch. But definitely for cranking, dude. So I have it in a box pool. If you're looking for budget fluorocarbon, this is the way to go. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm, I'm all fired up to go, dude. It's gonna be a cool trip, even if we don't catch that many fish or if I totally suck. Um, I've always had a love affair with, with Pickwick. It's a beautiful lake. There's a lot of offshore structure. There's a lot of nuance to the lake and there's some bigs out there, dude, some absolute bigs. And having a bunch of tackle that I can experiment with and go out there with is kind of got me fired up because I think some of this stuff, if not being new for, for you guys or for the fish, it's new for me and it's new things that I can learn to present to the fish. So I'm excited about that. But I'll put links to everything down in the in the description box below so you guys can find it at Tackle Warehouse if you're interested in learning more about any of those baits. But wish me luck, dude. Um, it's gonna be a cool trip. I hope I got a bunch of video for you guys when I come back. And if you guys enjoy this video or if you enjoy my sleeping, snoring, bog. Sleeping, snoring, bog. Hey, Bob. How are you doing? Are you coming to Pickwick? Good night. Definitely drop a like on this video and subscribe. Your grassroots support has really driven this channel to a level I never thought it would be at. And I can't thank you guys enough for that. But I won't hold you here. If you got any more recommendations for me fishing offshore this year, baits wise, technique wise, please drop them down in the comments box. I always like to get your feedback and I've learned a bunch from it. But for now, I'm gonna get my bags packed, get my baits put away, and uh, we're gonna get on the road.